In our last episode, we spoke about non-interest banking and its origin. And our speakers had excellent points that they shared with us. We're speaking about the terminologies of ethical banking today. And people need to know what the terminologies are. Because when you're talking about non-interest banking, you want to understand, okay, when they say this one, they say Mudaraba, we say which one, what are these terminologies and how do they shape non-interest banking? So in the sphere of Islamic banking, how can the lack of understanding cause damage or loss to stakeholders? And with us today is Mr. Ibrahim, and he's the one that will be taking this question. Mr. Ibrahim, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you. So we are asking, in the sphere of Islamic banking, how can the lack of understanding cause damage or loss to stakeholders? Okay, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. Uh... Uh, This question actually addresses um, one major element of um, the operation of non-interest banking or Islamic finance in court. Um, Non-interest banking or Islamic finance uh, really lies on on the basis of knowledge. It's a knowledge-based product or industry in in, in generality. So uh, that's really addressed the question you just rightly mentioned, uh, whereby you know the operators of not of this industry must have the prerequisite knowledge about the operation and activities of this industry therefore when you talk about this product you must master the meaning and the attribute of each product and services this industry offers uh, you must know what is murabaha, you must know what is musharaka, you, know, you must know what is ijara, you must know what is wakala, what is uh, kafala, etc. You must distinguish between one uh, to another product before you be able to uh, perfectly uh, really operate this product and services. Ignorance, as you rightly asked, can lead to substantial damage to this uh, industry in in terms of um, not knowing uh, i can address this question in two perspectives in a glance Uh, the first aspect is if you don't know the difference between one product to another you you might not be able to rightly capture the need of the market uh, for these services or product that you're offering and the other aspect as well when you don't know how to operate this product you might also because as i mentioned the product is or the industry is really relying on knowledge for you to rightly drive the profit and the profitability of these okay. uh, services to the shareholder or to, to, to the stakeholders in generality so when you don't know how to do things rightly for example in, in the documentation aspect which is very key in terms of how to operate this um, product then uh, that could lead to substantial loss of income because uh, you've not documented things rightly or you just book everything together without differentiating the sequence of those products and services we have what we call sequence of event in terms of how we do our transaction how we provide our services so when you miss one step that could lead to a loss of income and the annulment of the whole process. Okay, thank you. I, I will liken this to driving an airplane. You don't just jump into an airplane and hit the start button and fly. Certainly. You will crash. You got it. So yeah. you need adequate information, adequate knowledge for you to handle this. And I like what you mentioned about similarities. Like you, the name sounds similar because non-interest banking is not just for only Muslims. It's for everyone. It's just that it's guided by the principle of Islam because you don't take interest. Mm. So you mentioned some similarities. You want to know what's the what are the similarities between the definition of and even pronunciation of some of the terms? You mentioned some of them. Can you tell us the the terms and you know when subscribing to this model of banking? You know, let's know the difference. Like you mentioned some of the names and how do you differentiate them can you just give us some okay points? before i answer that question just in in, in in some seconds i would like to correct one information to the general public really non-interest banking lies or rely on the principle of islamic um, uh, jurisdiction but then it's not only that if we look at all the scriptures you can call the non-interest banking as abrahamic uh, finance or okay. Abrahamic system okay because even in Christianity in Judaism all those revealed religion yes the prohibition of interest is there 
Okay. Look at the the, the, the Holy Bible. You will see verses that prohibited the charge of mm. and the consumption of interest. So in a short note, it's just an Abrahamic finance, like some jurisdiction call it. So it might amaze you that it's not only in Islam. Wow. It's even in Christianity. It's there. Wow. If you check the Holy Bible, you'll you see it there. there. So it's that. It's just that the Islamic theory now is taking the initiative to introduce it. But it's not only because all the Abrahamic religious addresses the injustice in excess uh, in oppression excess. in carrying out the financial transactions right. so it's a share common value among all uh, well, religious yeah. thank you thank yeah. you for that yeah. thank you for number two over. um the differences between the terminologies also addresses the differences of how each product and service operate for example okay. we uh, from experience we have a lot of mixture among our customers or our stakeholders uh, with regards to what is the difference between a major element of because banking lies on deposit and the other side for the liability Amazing. and the one side for the mm -hmm. liability and the other side of asset That's financing it. so this is the major transaction that any bank carries out whether islamic or conventional so in islamic finance we have the uh, deposit side that we call uh, one product to address that need for customers which is the mudaraba because when you deposit uh, to save and to make money you deposit based on the mudaraba contracts and yeah. then we have for the asset uh, angle murabaha which is major financing avenue for the people that have needs for financing have deficit so the Murabaha and Mudaraba are similar in terms of pronunciation. So that's why you see people that wants to talk about Mudaraba say <laughs> Murabaha. <laughs> well, people True. that are the, and, the, and the vice versa. But then you can see they are totally different and they vary. Mudaraba is for the deposit when you receive funds from customers that have, have a needs to save and to invest. So you use that same funds to now mobilize them for Murabaha in the asset creation. Okay. So these two differences and people uh, tend to not differentiate between the two terms. And we have also other products we call um, here Musharaka, which is a common partnership that addresses the need for partnership between uh, the financial intermediary, which is the bank and the investor, which is the customer. So Musharaka is a partnership, is a partnership. You can do partnership with the bank to, uh, to address your business needs. And also we have one of the major transactions, Istisna. Istisna is uh, manufacturing or um, construction or uh, building. So when you do Istisna, you are addressing the need of uh, bringing into existence uh, an asset that wasn't in existence. So you pay in advance to bring in existence this asset. We have also Salam that address the agricultural needs. We have also Wakala Kafala, which is a contingent liability uh, transactions that address the need for guarantees and also for agency uh, that attract fees. So those are the meaning of the major uh, transactions that we, we, we do in, in, in Islamic banking. You, do, the, way, the way you explain this, I'm, I'm sure we could have like a class that lasts a whole day and you just keep pouring it out for us. Yeah, it's broad actually. It's very <laughs> thank, broad. Thank, yeah. you, thank you, Mr. Ibrahim. I just want to move to you, Lukman. Okay. Uh, you, you know, he had already mentioned, you know, the different the different um, names in ethical banking and some of how the differences come and how you can differentiate them. Well, how can Lotus Bank enlighten the public more about the benefits of Islamic banking? Um, so thank you very much. Um, you know, if you want to know more about um, Lotus um, products and services, I think so we have an... Um, like um, so this uh, podcast i think uh, so you can assess our podcast okay um you can assess our um, maybe um the information about our products and uh, all the services that um, so the bank is so is being offered um to its customers um you can find that in the um, on the platform of our social media okay so like uh, maybe twitter uh, facebook, facebook and uh, even if you google it so you will see us Right. So on the Google. Okay. So because um, so like he said, you know this industry is a knowledge based industry, and um, the only thing so you will know you will uh, um, you will um, understand them so the concept, mm -hmm. and you value so what the benefit the benefit so that this concept is going to give you so is to understand it very well. 
So okay. you understand the product, you understand the pictures, you understand them so the way it flows. So I think so these are the things that them so it's very important. So you you've mentioned social media, you mm. mentioned podcasts like this that mm-hmm. we have that is sponsored directly from the even bank. on our website and also we, and the website Site, website of the bank. And I know you have like even radio and TV jingles, even jingles, yes, yeah, so TV on. stations. Mm. I think so you can find us there. All right. So we have many programs that them um, so you, you can benefit from. To be honest, I I know Lotus Bank is um is widely known. And the inroads that is being made within the country is impressive. Mm. You know, I was in Abuja last week and I realized how visible the brand is. And the brand is just two to three, two to three years old. Yeah, just mm. two plus. Two, 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 two plus years old. And the inroads they are making is amazing. Okay, um, I just want to come over to you, Mr. Ibrahim, um, so that we could wrap up with you. What is the role of Sharia compliance in the monitoring of ethical banking practices? Great. Um, you know, um, the most important um, uh, aspect of non-interest banking that uh, has a different, very significant difference with conventional banking is that it has what we call a Sharia department in the bank. And the Sharia department is really saddled with the monitoring, auditing all transactions and all activities of the bank to ensure its compliance with the rules and values of the classical Sharia principles. So the Sharia compliance actually has three different dimensions that it looks at to ensure the concept of that fairness, equity, justice being rendered to the whole uh, stakeholders, whether it is the bank itself or its clients. So um, before the transaction commences, we have a unit that will look at the request of customers or the uh, initiative of the business proposal then it will ensure that everything is complied with to ensure that fairness and justice and equity to the transaction then at the second leg also there is a, a control function being practiced uh, from the sharia perspective in the risk management department whereby the sharia risk officer will also look at the transaction to ensure the justice and fairness and equity to to the stakeholders then after the consummation of the transaction also a sharia auditor will ensure everything has been complied with and um, um it might interest the listener also to also know that uh, the principle of islamic finance also look at the justice and fairness to the customer when he defaulted and or oh, oh, and then there is a charge against him for penalty if he present um, a genuine reason for that default to the Sharia Department. The Sharia Department will ensure that charge will re- will be returned back to him. And if there is a shortage in his profit distribution, also Sharia uh, officer will ensure that that profit is been paid Pay. back to him. Mm-hmm. If he's charged for any unjustifiable charges like uh, the management fee or whatever fee that is uh, is not really. Uh, fair to him he can also raise the alarm and the sharia officer will ensure that he's not being charged as well and it's paid back to and yeah paid. yeah yeah wow, we, reverse, we, re- we have even um, what we call reversal of income which you can hardly find it in any other yeah in, in, in non-interest banking we reverse income and we reverse charges for penalty if customer proof to have a general reason for default we we also uh, pay back customers what is on due for them we also give customers discretion to choose uh, whatever he likes in terms of dealing with other parties like for insurance we can give customer discretion to choose uh, he can negotiate for himself then he comes to the bank then we give him what he wants wow yeah so this this is truly called ethical banking this yeah. is what this yeah. is this is yeah. ethical That's banking uh, mind you as well we don't compound charges on customer once we do like a transaction and we sealed the profit that we are going to charge you we are not going to compound it on you even if you default it will remain the same Wow. We are not uh, also uh, charging you any excessive, unjustifiable charge like uh, other charges, like hidden charges, like uh, all those cost of transaction charges. We don't charge unnecessarily. We only give you one profit rate and we will abide by that 
profit rate from the commencement of the transaction to okay, the yeah. maturity. You know, for people that are listening, you should understand that this is what is called ethical banking. When you just say ethical banking, it's not just in words; it's actually in spirit and in practice. Exactly. You don't hear people say that you reversed. You go to the bank and they complain, "Oh, I was charged too much," and you reversed. You don't get that. But Lotus Bank is telling you that this is what they practice. It's an everyday practice. And we have Mr. Ibrahim here. And we even have um, Mr. Lukman, who is from the Sharia department. He and I'm sure your department, you are, you are the ones that handle this for mm-hmm. the bank. So or, he's, the head. he's the head. Oh, yeah. so you work together. That's amazing. For everyone listening, we have heard the terminologies of ethical banking. Ethical banking in Lotus Bank is practiced in spirit and in the letters. We've heard about the differences between when you take money and how you take it as an investment and it's given to the customers in form of loans for you to expand your business, grow. Lotus Bank treasures themselves as a partner to your business. Now that we've learned some of this because we pride non-interest banking as a knowledge-based banking and that is why we have a podcast like this and i hope you learned one or two things from mr ibrahim and mr lukman thank you for coming on the podcast today thank you very much i hope to have you back once we have other information you You can hit up find more information on the website on social media handles of lotus bank anytime and if you have any question you can contact the bank at any time the bank is willing and always ready to listen to you thank you for being on the podcast and hope to see you on the next podcast Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much.